Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the region around the Roman city of Sertica, where the Eastern Germanic Separatists are attacking the Eastern Roman Empire under the command of our Emperor Arcadius. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, the Eastern Roman Empire and history. And let's fight this battle. The terrain is light forest. I hope there's a bit of an incline that we can use to our advantage. The Thunderbolts of Thurneraz and the Receivers of the Dead versus the Legio 11 Claudia. He's a much better general Arcadius than, than this guy. And you know, it's good to get Arcadius some exercise. He hasn't been doing much lately. Okay, it's raining. That sucks. But the Barbarians have a much higher ranged setup than I do. So this might actually prove to be our advantage. We are going to Corner Camp. Which basically is a cheaty way of fighting battles where you're outnumbered. Where you use the magical lines on the corner to defend your flanks. Come on. Spearmen up front. And we'll put the Comandantenses behind them. This is not going to be the real setup. I'm just doing this to get everybody ready. And then cavalry. And emperor. Okay, so let's start the battle. And for right now, let's just go in half speed. Alright, so. Actually, unfortunately, this corner is kind of at a slight decline. But we'll do what we can. You know what? I'm going to just mix in the swordsmen with the spearmen. There we go. That way, it'll make our lines a bit more thick. Or should it... What in the world? There we go. Okay, that's the best. Now, archers and I guess our skirmishers right behind them. Cavalry way in the back so they're not attacked by arrows. And emperor. You can also get into a testudo. Oh, no, I don't want you in front. But you can also get into a testudo. So we'll put you a little closer. Okay. We'll speed that up. So, Ilia Eudoxia, her father, as I said, was a magister militum for the Western Roman Empire. And he was a Romanized Frank. But, unfortunately, he died. And so, while she was still at a young age, Ilia Eudoxia moved to Constantinople to live with one of the magister militums of the Eastern Roman Empire. A man by the name of Promotus. And presumably a friend of her father's, or at least some relation to them, although he was a Roman. I have heard two separate stories as to how the Emperor Arcadius found out about Eudoxia. In one story, he didn't know her at all, but he fell in love with her sight unseen after seeing a portrait painting of her. And decided to marry her that way, because one of the general consensus items about Eudoxia was that she was incredibly beautiful. However, the other way I've heard it told, and the way that I give the most credence to, is that the nobility circles of the Eastern Roman Empire were not very large. And so it generally stands to reason that if she was growing up in the household of a Magister Militum, who must have been you know, very politically connected, and she was roughly around the same age as Arcadius and his brother Honorius, that they probably knew each other. They probably grew up together. Promotus had two sons of his own, roughly around the same ages. And so odds are that they went to school together. They probably had some connection with each other as they were children. And that's probably how they knew each other. In 395, Theodosius, now Theodosius the Great, he died 
after the Battle of the Frigidus River. And Arcadius, at this point, became the Emperor of the East, while his brother Honorius became the Emperor of the West. And that's where this game takes place right now. And there's not much going on right now, so we know what we could do is we can take a look at our troops. I know it's rainy and kind of crappy, but... So these are our Legio Comitatenses. They don't look substantially different from our previous Legio, but they're cool. And then the Lanciare Signores, they're cool because they all have the same shield. So at least they have some kind of uniformity. I don't see much in the way of our enemies. We've been fast forwarding for a while now. We could send up some scouts. Don't really want to. Reconnaissance. Did that work? I don't even know. Let's just go see what's going on. We'll get up to the top of this ridge. Come on, guys. Still no enemies. This is very interesting. Oh, there's somebody. Look! The enemy has laid an ambush! The enemy approaches! The German cavalry. Okay. Let's get everyone testudoed up. So if you'll recall, after Theodosius died, he left his son Arcadius under the control of Flavius Rufinus, who was one of his trusted advisors. So Rufinus was mostly in charge of Arcadius and what he was doing. However, Rufinus was having his own little petty squabbles with Stilicho, the general of the West, who was in charge of Honorius. And so, while Rufinus would have preferred that Arcadius married his daughter, he was distracted. And so the eunuch Eutropius, also existing in this game, kind of a dick in this game, probably like he was in real life, he snuck in and managed to seal the deal with the wedding between Arcadius and Eudoxia. Which, in the end, didn't work out too well for him, but we'll get to that at a later point. The marriage took place just three months after Theodosius' death. Arcadius was 18 years old, and presumably Eudoxia was as well. And, as I mentioned before, Arcadius is believed to have been influenced by the beauty of Eudoxia. And these, these Eastern German Germanic separatists are very timid people. We've already wasted how much time waiting for them? So... You know what, folks? I'm just going to pause the video, and I'll come back when our enemies make an appearance. Okay? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, our enemies have arrived. Finally. Now we are all in testudo formation. Our archers are ready to go. We should have no trouble whatsoever the stopping them. They're attempting to flank our troops here. That actually might work out well for them. So let's send a unit of scout equites up here just to bolster the lines. Yeah, they're not idiots. I mean, they're definitely focusing on the weak spots. But we are higher quality troops. We're in our testudo. There shouldn't be much they can do against us. Now, where is their general? I don't see the general yet on the battlefield. Because if I do, I could tell my archers to focus on him. Now, these archers are getting nailed. Probably by the enemies. Yeah, the enemies range troops. It's okay. He'll be fine. No! 
Already one of their spear units is retreating. The enemy refuses to admit defeat. Their unit has rallied. They don't have any pikes, which is great. You know, our ranged troops are just not functioning as well as I would like them to. Standard shot should be fine against lightly armored ranged troops. Here come some axemen. Everybody's morale seems to be dropping on my side. Not sure. But we're doing okay. There's the general. Okay. All of our ranged troops. You guys aren't really doing much good. Let's just put you back. And we'll focus on the general. Focus fire on the general as soon as we can. I mean, they greatly outnumber us with ranged troops. We knew that going in. That's why everybody's in Testudo. And we're doing okay. I mean, we are better troops than they are by far. And as soon as we can break their spear lines... Who is that? Oh, one of our archers. I don't mind that so much. As soon as we break their spear lines, their range troops will be easy to mow down with our cavalry. Alright. Hit their general hard. Maybe heavy shot. Maybe precision. Come on. Hopefully they won't be hitting our own guys in the back. They don't appear to be. But we haven't taken out one of the general's men. Hmm. Still haven't taken out one of his men. Oh, took out a couple there. That's good. We're still doing okay on the line, though. The line is definitely holding. All right, they're already fleeing. We just need to work down these spearmen so that we can... Another group of archers is fleeing. It's okay. We've taken out one of their nobles. That's not very good. Maybe heavy shot's not the way to go. Maybe flaming shot. Bonus versus cavalry won't do much versus infantry. He's already exhausted. Alright, as soon as these spearmen and this horseman have been routed, we're going to send out our cavalry to take out. In fact, let's just do it now. Wait. No, no. There we go. Alright. Go after the Fundatores. Okay. Our Lanciares, let's just, you know what? Let's get out of Testudo and take these guys from behind. Okay. Go after these guys. Excellent. What are you guys doing? Go fast. Okay, these guys are out of formation. That's not a good thing. But we're soaking up the right line pretty well. Our cavalry are tying down their range troops here. Come on, cavalry. I don't have time for this nonsense. There we go. Actually, no, no, no. Let's just go straight at him. Excellent. Let's see if we can't help these guys over here. Excellent. Move down. Move up. Move down against these guys. 
Oh, what a terrible, rainy, horrible battle. But these guys are just ranged troops. So it looks like they're running out of ammo. They're just running everywhere. All right. Let's see if we can't get some of these spearmen from behind here. Oh, bowmen. Let's go for them. Actually, let's go for these guys. All right, Arcadius, join the party. Are you still in attacking Testudo? All right. We are just closing the noose around them. We're attacking their... We should charge their bowmen. Excellent. Scout Echo Taser. Not winning this battle over here against these guys. The levy. They're gone. Go surround these guys from all angles. Arcadius actually lost a fair amount of his troops to arrow fire. Okay. We lost another unit of cavalry. Wow. It's normally not a good idea to charge spearmen if you're cavalry, but if they are low morale and running away. Okay. Hit these guys. Hit them from two angles. Excellent. There's only five in that unit. 31 in that unit. Take these guys out. One in that unit. That's fine. Oh, I can't wait till we have decent cavalry. We can speed it up again. Two, thirteen. A glorious victory will soon be yours. Yeah, that's fine. All right. The question is, did we lose anyone completely? We lost a thousand men, so half our troops, pretty much, more than half. But we'll replenish. All right, lovely. So one interesting thing to note about Eudoxia is she only lived for 10 years after her marriage to Arcadius. However, in that time, she bore him seven children, of which five of them survived and two were presumed stillborn. It was rumored, though we don't have any facts one way or the other, that some of those children may not have been Arcadius's. All right, what's going on here? Really? The rebels have followed us. Well, these aren't barbarians. These guys are, despite the fact that their general is nowhere near as good as my general, they have just as good of troops. We have a range advantage, but they are Testudo troops. Journey complete. The Roxolanians are gone. Okay, the adoption happened without a hitch. And we actually have some good money now, somehow. That's great. Alright, but we need to manage our business. Oh, Rufinus gained a level. Not who I expected, since he didn't do anything this turn, but... Morale when attacking, that's fine. But since he is in our family, even though I don't like him very much... Wow, he's terrible. We should give him some authority and some cunning. And he has an epic poet. Yeah, that's good for influence. That's fine. Doesn't need any of this. No. All right. 
Is that a navy of the rebels? It is. But it looks like our Roman friends can handle them. Let's get around here and just see what's going on. Wait, we're taking attrition? Oh, because of deep water. Huh. Not anymore, though. We're in shallow water now. So we're just going to keep an eye on here. If these guys manage to take over Corallus, we'll blockade it. What does Rome require of me? Okay. Arcadius is not doing great. Can these guys make it all the way? They can make it all the way to Tremontium. Both of these are level 2. Arcadius actually managed to survive quite well. But I don't want to go and deal with attrition. So we're going to pull back to Tremontium. Because Sertica has walls. It can take care of itself for a turn. And we'll raise up our troops. And then we'll go back against them. We've hurt them pretty badly. Now we have some money. Let's see if we can't fix Axum. We can. Excellent. Okay. It looks like that's all we can do, though. We can dismantle this. That's fine. A Thermi. That actually might be a really good idea, though. It might be better for us to build a sanitation building here. We might just do that, so I'm not going to upgrade that. Let's save the money. But you... Can we move you somewhere where you won't get attrition? Yeah, good. Okay. Alright, cavalry guy. I think it's time now. We need some decent cavalry. Let's get... Two cataphracts. It's expensive, but worth it. And they are shock cavalry, so we also want to get... Let's see, which one of these? The Dalmate. The Promoti are okay. They cost 588, 494. We're gonna go with the cheaper ones though. Okay. So we have a cavalry force basically on the way. You're suffering attrition. We're gonna head back to Amida, which should ease the worries with attrition. Amida's upgrading, good, that's what we need. Research and Wealth. That's really all we can do right now with them. Alright, so we just fled from the Rebels here. They're just everywhere. There's just way too many Rebels. They're taking attrition, which is great. But we need, you know what we need to do? We need to get this army upgraded. That's just all it, all it is. We need to get them upgraded. So we're going to do that. Another thing I've been meaning to do is I want to recruit a champion to join up with Arcadius and raise the morale of his troops. So this guy will give plus 10 experience per turn, so that's great. He will raise public order in the local province. That's good in a lot of situations. No, but we're going to go with the experience guy because that's his purpose. His purpose is to raise the experience of Arcadius' troops, especially because when we lose troops in battle, I'm assuming the experience goes down. Okay. We're just going to refresh our forces here. He still has a lot of movement. Okay. Oh, our champion. Oh, yeah, that's right, because he was recruited in an area with a handler, so he automatically gets four skills, which are amazing. So military training up. The assault action I don't care about. Military training up. Military replenishment. Harass army. Call to arms. What does that do? Increases proven capacity. We'll just raise his zeal. Unfortunately, wow, this guy has every bad trait in the book. He is melancholic, which lowers his zeal. He's boring, which lowers his authority. And he is irresolute, which lowers his zeal. We really struck struck lead with this guy. He is, however, intelligent. So his action costs are cheaper. But he is not very good at defending himself. And he's not very good at defending himself, I guess. So that's really what happens here. We're not going to use him, however, for actions. 
So I don't think that's that big of a deal. I think Cunning's actually probably the best. It'll eventually give him good line of sight. High Zeal's great because it improves campaign movement range, though I'm pretty sure that's just for him, not his army. But now we're completely, because of our Handler, filled up in terms of the benefit he gives to the army he's with. So that'll really benefit Arcadius and his troops. Yeah, you're going to keep making these people happy. And you are going to make these people happy. Alright, so we're steadying things here with the new... And we even have a level 2 church building, which is costing us a ton of money. I might want to dismantle that down to a level 1 church building. That'll reduce public order, which we don't need, but it'll save us about 500, I think. 500 or 400. Yeah, that'd make a big difference. And Greek Christian is up a lot. Still, though, public order is basically even. I probably shouldn't mess with that. What would improve it? If I had 5,000, improving the city would improve it by one. It's not a ton. Tabernet would lower it. Improving to an aqueduct would raise it by one. That's not great. So right now it's basically public order versus money, and I'm not going to disband the church right now. I could raise these two mini-cities up to level two, and that would raise public order a bit too. That's all I've got. Alright. This guy's in Marcianopolis. Yeah, he's just going to stay there and defend against the Germans, should he need to, or the Germanics, I should say. Let's give him a little bit of exercise, though. And finally, this guy. Oh, good. I can improve these guys. Well, just one of them, anyway. And the public order here is getting better. It's getting better quite a bit, actually. Very good. So, we're just gonna be happy about that. And end the episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.